Hey everyone, Norm from Tested here. I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada, location of the AWS Deep Racer League Championship Cup. Blaine, tell me about this competition, who the competitors are, and what they've been working toward this past year. Well, Norman, we're very excited about this because this is the final round of 16. After a full year of competition that actually started in Santa Clara back in March, we have had thousands of competitors, hundreds of miles of track where people have raced to get the best times to qualify in each one of the cities. We've had 29 cities that qualified in addition to a virtual race where people from anywhere in the world, if they can get the best time in the virtual track, they're able to compete as well. We took the best yesterday. There were 64 competitors that qualified. We are down to the round of 16. These are the 16 fastest developers in the world right now. And we'll give people a sense out there of what the race actually entails. Of course, we've covered the Deep Racer RC vehicle, but that's the physical part of it. It runs on the machine learning, reinforcement learning models that these developers have made. That's right. In a nutshell, the developers teach the car to teach itself how to drive, which is different than any kind of an RC competition. They're so, fully autonomous. Fully autonomous. The only thing the drivers have control over is the percentage of battery that gets applied to the motor. Kind of like equivalent to a throttle almost. It's, it's almost a throttle, but we actually don't want to call it a throttle because there's no direct relationship to 80% gives you five meters per second, 90% gives you six meters per second or whatever it might break down to. It's just a raw battery percentage. Mm. Now the skilled developers right now are on the track testing the batteries as they are today and testing the cars mm. and loading their models and how they behave. But once the model gets in the car and it's on the track, it's kind of like they've trained a dog and it's a dog show. And you hope the dog does everything you trained it to do, but these are real intelligences in the car and sometimes they don't behave as expected. Right. And so even with the best, the best, you'll see them racing around the track and the car will miss a turn and plow straight into a wall. Right. Because the car at that moment thought that was a good idea. Yeah, and this is a physical environment and as much training as you can do, as much simulations as you can run, nothing will prepare you for unless you actually tune your model for the actual physical car on a physical track that's been designed. Which is the amazing thing about this virtual simulator they've been using. Some of the competitors have been so neurotic about this virtual environment equating to real that they've done things like include bounce. Mm. In the real world, the car's got shocks. I mean, we've got monster shocks on these vehicles that the car jiggles around. Virtual world, there's no jiggle. And so some of the competitors were smart enough to realize if they simply add camera jitter, like we get in video games nowadays, if they add that to their virtual camera when they translate sim to real, the physical model understands what to do when the camera's bouncing around. Right, right. And even in the moment of the, of the race, that these time trials themselves, competitors are adjusting on the fly, so they're practicing the responsiveness, so that connectivity. Absolutely. All these kind of variables. Yeah. Give me a sense of some of the best times and some of the fun things that have been happening. Sure. So yesterday was the very first day any of the competitors globally got to put wheels on this brand new track. This is the 2019 reInvent track. There are no straightaways. There's a lot of real wicked S curves in this. In fact, already these brand new walls have a lot of skid marks where cars have plowed into them. That meant last night, our field of 16, I've talked to a number of them, most of them were in the virtual lab retraining their models for areas they found were going bad on the physical track. Wow. Which means today, times are faster than yesterday. The world record holder, Sola from Japan, Team DMP, she holds the record on the old track of 744. Yesterday, she clocked the world record for this track at 9.05. Overnight, the work she did, she came in this morning, posted an unofficial time of 8.12, almost a full second faster, which for humans may not sound like much, but at these speeds, that's monstrous. And I, having some hands-on time with the Deep Racer, adjusting it, it's not easy. It's not just press and go. Oh, I no. mean, the fact that she's getting under 10 seconds is really impressive. So this is where teams really help out. So Law is part of Team DMP. There are actually three competitors in this field of 16 that are from her organization. It's, it's a printing company in Tokyo um, that is working to reinvent itself through machine learning. And their company has actually 
decided to use Deep Racer as the engine to train their developers what reinforcement learning does. Well, this team has gotten really good at log analytics and heat maps and trying to find out where things work and where they don't work and tweaking waypoint models. And the, the analytics they do are phenomenal. Um, and last night, they do a little more and it pays off. Other competitors are working as teams. We have a team from a, a, un a university in Taiwan that it came with a number of competitors and two of them qualified for the round of 16. And there's a lot of work that they've been doing over this past year to get to that point, a lot of collaboration among their teams and all that work is being put on display in competition starting in just a few minutes. And even collaboration where you don't even work together. There was an underground group of developers that just got together and were buddies because of Deep Racer. It's ballooned into a group of 1,200 developers globally all sharing log analysis and models and ideas, building a whole community from scratch. AWS didn't build it, the community built it. What started as a learning tool to get developers introduced to machine learning and reinforcement learning, now it's become this obsession. It's Clearly. opening doors everywhere. Yeah, super cool. Thank you so much, Blaine. Norm, thank you for having me. Pleasure to meet you. We're gonna have a chance to take a look at these races. Okay. So this is Darren, we just watched you compete in your bracket, and you won your bracket. Yes, Group C. Yeah, as you're practicing and moving on for your next round of competition, uh, I noticed that in your bracket, as you were doing your trial, you switch models. Tell me about your approach to designing the models. And the, and the one just there, yeah, yeah. So yesterday we won Group C with uh, 9.3, and this morning, or this afternoon, sorry, we were running the same models, same car, same track, just wasn't, finding the lines at all, 14 seconds was the best it could do. And when you can only control the speed, you, you ha all you can do is change the model, you have two options, change right. model, change speed. If the speed change isn't working, you just gotta keep trying different models. So I didn't have a good first run at all, and then I got the other car and I just asked, you just check the calibration? And they just went through one calibration setting, and that made all the difference. Just started flying around over and over again. And then once I got a lap to qualify, I switched to a more risky model that I was making last night, and that's what set the 8.9 world record. So you're developing and tuning that model even as late as last night. There's two on at the moment too. And they're, they're training right now? It, it, you need to, like, it still isn't enough to beat Solar and um, DMPs 8.2, 8.4. Yes. Yeah. Now I won't face them in the bracket, but if I chase those times, it should make me better as well. So I'm not trying to go too crazy, but small adjustments in the in the sake of speed. Yeah. I mean, in layman's terms, you're giving, you're teaching the the deep racer how to learn. You're kind of developing a lesson plan and and kind of the carrots to reward for for the, the oh, yeah. actions, yeah, yeah. right? And you're basically changing these lesson plans up on the fly, and then saying, go go through the simulation, go through the training, update your normal updates, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And, and, then and, and take it to the sim to real world. Is yeah. the real world where there are a lot of variability, even with the lighting. Yeah, because even if you watch this one, this is the same model that my uh, co-mate David Kelly's running. It's just not quite exactly as fine-tuned as over there. Could be the track, could be the car. Um, it's hard to say it's the driver because the driver has so little input. Yeah. But um, if you want to make it here, I think have a couple of models that are different from each other. Uh, I'm starting to be too consistent with one model. So if that model didn't work, none of its predecessors will work. So I have to be sure or careful I don't dive head first into, into one particular plan. Are you noticing plan. that even during a run, the way the deep racer under your model behaves, you're noticing that is a direct result of something oh, definitely, you changed? Definitely, that yeah. The way it took that corner, the how cautious it was? 100%, yeah. If you want to keep it to the left, there's parameters to set, keep left, and you'll see immediately that's what the car will do. 
it doesn't care about how quickly it can get around it. It cares about getting that reward. Yeah. You have to tie that reward to time. And it's quite tricky. I would have a lot of models return a higher reward for a slower time. And it's not much, but you want to try and stamp those out and say you want a higher reward for a faster time. The time is what I care about. You care about the reward, so it's a bit of back and forth. Thank you very much, Ryan. You're part of the Liberty Mutual team here, your other fellow competitors. So tell me about that environment. You're, along with other developers in the IT department, kind of just working on this in your spare time? Sure. Yep. Spare time and loads of support. So Liberty Mutual, Liberty IT in Belfast, which is a technology arm of Liberty Mutual. And then my unit, a team of individuals made up called Quantum. All of them together have come to say, we're going to support the slave, we're going to support the teams running it, we're going to get you the resources to train your models, we're going to set loads of guidelines and rules so everything's fair between all the teams. And then once we won that league, it was um, just a bit more support. What do you need to be competitive in Vegas? Yeah. So whether it's um, a car that we could race with, um, renting a track down from uh, Amazon Dublin. So Fernando, he's walking about here, and he, so he was a big help as well. Just going through the whole league process, coming here today, the whole team being paid to come to Vegas, reinvent and to support us. It would be a different story if it was just me racing by myself. Even if it's the same model, I do believe having people with you support new makes a big difference. That's awesome. Just to give you that courage to go a bit faster or if things aren't going well, don't put your head down. Yeah, keep at it. There's a lot of team spirit, a lot of company pride. It sounds like companies trusting you guys to compete here and take advantage of all the learnings that you guys are going through with AWS. Definitely, like Libby was just 100% behind reinforcement learning, machine learning as a way to explore that in a more competitive environment. So we race the are, but we're learning how to program in Python, with hyperparameters, how to make good data, how to avoid bad data. If you've made a bad data set, you can recover it if you maybe change the tracks, but that could translate to other areas as well. All right, well, I know you have a lot more practice and tuning to do. Yes, good luck yes. on your next round. Thanks Thank for you. chatting with you, Darren. Thank you. So while Darren is over there practicing for his next competition, uh, we want to give, uh, get a better sense of how the models are developed. And this is Matt here. You're also part of the Liberty Mutual team. You're Darren's teammate, yes. essentially. A lot of you guys out here, um, and it sounds like you guys have a lot of support back at home to work on your models and, and train them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think we started off this league with the expectation that maybe 10 or 15 teams might be interested. By the time we'd finished signups, we had 64 Liberty teams competing, which was just phenomenal. So we had a a similar bracket system to what's here. Uh, and then our, our team from LIT, Liberty International, uh, they just absolutely blew everyone out of the water on the final competition. Uh, we had uh, a good time that we thought was eight seconds, and then they set almost nearly a world record pace. So it's all about how your strategy in the deep racer uh, can affect how quickly it can go around the turns, how smooth it looks, uh, and what happens when it gets itself into a corner. So tell me about the different strategies. What are the variables that you and the other developers are tuning, uh, not only in the reward function, but also in how capable, how many actions you can actually program and allow DeepRacer to move. Absolutely. Uh, if you go into the AWS console, it gives you a lot of things you can change. Um, first of it is the action space. So what can the car do? It can either turn left or right. It can go fast or slow. And you can set as many variations in between that as you want. The problem is, is if you have the wider variations, the larger numbers take a much longer time to train. So our strategy was to have a relatively low number of actions. We just had five, one that's very fast straight, and then the side angles got slower and slower so the car wouldn't start to drift too much. Um, and that worked out well for us because we were able to train a lot of models very quickly. Right. But the LIT team strategy, which wound up being obviously a world record pace, uh, was to have uh, a one model that they could train on multiple different tracks. So it was an agnostic race model. You could take it to a track it's never seen before, and it's probably going to be able to get along just fine. And if it has any issues, you can go in and make minor corrections to the model so you could you know, maybe get a time like what you saw today. Because really the constraints you have are not only the intuition that you put into the, the model, 
model, but how much time you have to iterate. And if you're working on four different models, something riskier, something more precise, and you're tuning that, and you're trading that for hours at a time, that's going to be a lot more time overall than someone who's just doing a generalized, efficient model, or something that maybe has like a smaller action space. Less granularity in terms of the movements, but again, you can iterate faster. And that's the key to it, is iterating faster. Um, the LIT team tried so many different things. I know our team tried like five or six different strategies until we finally settled on what we have today. And we're getting to the point where it's so close between the models that everything you do, every minor tweak, makes a huge difference. So training it at those faster action space speeds can really make the difference between a, a competitive model and one that just doesn't make the cut. And a lot of these top competitors are now that sub 10 second time, which is a huge improvement for when you guys all started, it was in the, in much longer than that. Yeah, I mean, last year, if you look at what we had for uh, Deep Racer, we had teams and, and you know our Liberty teams included who were just really excited to get times of 15 seconds. And now 10 seconds isn't acceptable, right? You have to get that eight or nine seconds to, to stay in at this point. Are you really looking to next season? They announced the Deep Racer Evo. It's going to be head-to-head -head direct competition. What are your immediate thoughts on that? I'm super excited for the Evo. I can't wait to get my hands on one and try it out. Uh, very excited to see the object avoidance. I don't know what their plans are there, maybe throw a banana peel on the track, but uh, between that and the head-to-head -head racing where you would be able to like get in front of someone to prevent them from passing or try to overtake someone, that's a huge machine learning problem that I have no idea how to solve yet, but very look much looking forward to figuring out what we can do to uh, try out and iterate again. All the existing models kind of go out the window, you have so many more things to contend with, yeah. it'll be a whole new world. I think I'll start by listening to whatever Darren says. <laughs> <laughs> well, great to meet you, Matt. Great to meet you. Thanks so much. Of course.